I've been wanting to go to Mallorca for a long time now. Deep water soloing was always something I really wanted to explore. Misha and me were planning it for, I think, years basically. And this year it finally all came together. Trying something new with deep water soloing was this new challenge. Being a little bit scared, being up high above the water without any rope was something new. And this definitely makes this discipline so special. Being like 10 or 15 meters above the water, all of a sudden you're like in this crazy kind of focus. Now I just wanted to get my mind free of gym climbing and just enjoy rocks, enjoy the sea, have a good time with friends and uh, yeah, also just feel a bit scared sometimes. He said that it's going to be a more chill trip, but I always know that there's always a goal in his mind and a special route that he wants to climb. I think I've been known to be a very ambitious person and if I go somewhere I usually want to send something. I knew it will be like a mix of tryharding and holidays, but I definitely wanted to try hard. My goal is still to climb like the hardest deep water soloing routes that are out there. So trying Espontas and trying Alasha is uh, very obvious and I can't wait to jump on those routes. Deep water soloing is definitely something very special and I mean I always wanted to try it because I felt like it's free soloing but with like a very nice insurance and uh, it just seems so cool to try. Together with Misha we were already making plans to go to Mallorca and try some of the hardest uh, deep water soloing routes. And then more and more friends joined and were psyched to come with us. We were always like a super fun crew. A lot of like old friends, um, climbers, and everyone just there to have a good time. I've known Jacob for like 20 years almost. We started climbing uh, competitions together. He always was uh, my best friend. We never really had a bad time. You're a lot more confident with a crew that supports you and you know they will be here for you if anything happens. The biggest challenge is definitely in the head. You just have to kind of forget that there's maybe 10, 15 meter underneath you and you will just fall not into the rope but into the water. But as soon as you're really focused, it's actually no problem. Obviously I can swim a little bit. I don't want to swim long distances. So that's why I had some respect coming here, but I think I learned a lot during this trip. Um, I'm definitely also a better swimmer now, and that's why I also enjoyed the whole experience so much more. None of us uh, grew up at the sea. We are like all mountaineers basically, or we all grew up in the mountains, and we are not like the very best swimmers, I would say. We've been trying to be pretty careful. We also tried to do some high jumps. But I think the biggest thing was also that we just went step by step, did some easier routes and slowly we're trying to go also on the harder routes. The north coast of Mallorca is definitely quite different compared to like the south. Porta Soyea and all the routes there feel like all more exposed than like most of the cracks in the south. Yeah, once I came to Mallorca, I also contacted uh, Sebastian. 
and the rock is so, you know, really good quality, it's like ivory. I knew from other friends that he's like a super helpful guy that knows everything about the island and deep water sailing basically. It was amazing. We looked at a lot of walls, but also we had the chance to finally get a glimpse of uh, Alasha. Alasha is, I think, one of the most amazing routes I've ever seen. If it was a sport climbing route, I think it would get a sense after a sense because everyone would love to climb it. Alasha was first ascended also by Chris Sharma, just like Espontas and all the other hard routes in Mallorca, basically. It doesn't have a repetition yet. Yarne has been trying it quite a lot, um, but I think not so many other people have had the balls to try it, I think. Alasha is uh, actually a very imposant line. I traveled a bit around the uh, north part of the island and also kind of looking for, for new lines, but really Alasha is standing out because it's like a very compact overhanging wall. Alasha is very aesthetical as a line. It's a lot more crimpy, it's a lot more finger power. This wall is just super exposed, like out to the open sea. It's a very high wall and yeah, just once you're on the wall, you you feel a lot more adrenaline than like at some other places. It's a lot wilder, it's higher, it's a lot more intimidating. In Alasha, you definitely don't want to fall sideways because you're a lot higher up. So the scare factor is playing a role on Alasha for sure. The wall is obviously crazy high. I think it's almost like 50 meter high wall. It's, it's just an amazing wall. Like the colors, the rock quality, the holds on it. It's just perfect. Jakob and I are such good friends that uh, there's definitely not much rivalry among us. For sure we compete in a way, but it's more of a friendly competition and we always push each other to try harder and maybe do a move the other one hasn't done before and that gives the other guy the motivation to try even harder and uh, do eventually also this move for this route. I think grading in deep water soloing is extremely difficult. I would think it would make sense if there was like its own grading scale because it can be way harder to send something way harder in sport climbing just because of all the other things that make it difficult. Like you can't work a route, all the conditions and stuff like that. Alasha as a deep water soloing route would be graded definitely different as if it was a sport climb. 
I think it's definitely one of, or maybe the hardest deep water soloing route out there. And climbing this grade above the water is very difficult. The crux is a quite long boulder problem. You have a lot of hard moves that you have to do already around like 50 meters above the water, which is definitely scary the first times you try it. So that's what makes Alasha quite special, I think. We knew we definitely want to go back there, but we had to wait a bit, wait for some better conditions, which is not easy since it's a north wall. Nes Pontas is a legendary route opened by the one and only Chris Sharma, who has opened most of those hard deep water soloing routes here in Mallorca. It's just such an impressive line. The atmosphere here, this place is just so magical. Uh, I always knew this is one of the main goals of the trip or at, like, at least try this route because it looks so spectacular. But I always wanted to, to climb on this route and mostly just try this jump. We wanted to go back to Alasha as soon as possible, but we knew we had to wait for the right conditions, which is hard with this north wall. Um, Yerne was spending most of his days at Alasha, so we always contacted him and asked him if it already gotten better. Meanwhile, just climbed on all the other amazing spots that the island has to offer. We definitely wanted to explore also the rest of the deep water soloing in Mallorca. The landscape is just breathtaking there. I mean, those perfect cliffs, perfect limestone, which just cut into the ocean. Um, as a climber, you just want to climb on this perfect rock. So yeah, Cova del Diablo is uh, probably the most famous area in Mallorca, I would say. It's a very big area and has like a lot of routes and also a lot of like famous routes. It was obviously a place that we really wanted to go to and check out some of the classics like uh, Lost God and Two Smoking Barrels, I think is one of the deep water soloing routes that everyone wants to send one day with this amazing jump. I think for like Jacob at the beginning he was kind of a a scared guy, like uh, a few years back when we jumped down some cliffs, he was like, oh, I don't know, maybe I'll jump here and it's, it's kind of high. And uh, But Jacob is a person, as soon as he sets himself a goal, does like this in his mind and he's like a beast. It's crazy. He jumps 20 meter jumps now and isn't scared a little bit. 
I was happy to be able to flash or on-site all of those routes. I've seen videos of all of them, so uh, it was a very cool day just trying to jump on as many routes as possible and trying to tick all those classics. We all know Jakob is a, a really, really strong climber, and definitely one of the very best in the world. But uh, in my eyes, what makes him so special is the ability to climb a route or climb a boulder once he has done the moves. That's, I think, an ability that really stands out and uh, I think that distinguishes him from many climbers. To try the route is not as easy as on Espontas. If you want to try the moves, you need to repel like probably around 50 meters on the slab and then you get into the overhang of Alasha and then you can slowly start trying the moves. And there are like not many features where you could use like some tread gear to get closer to the wall. So it's quite difficult to work uh, on the moves. But uh, also this makes it uh, way more special. You have to um, swing and pendle all the time to actually get into the route and try it because it's so steep. And it was actually really fun to even try the boulder. The crux is a quite long boulder problem, probably like a seven or eight moves. You try it. Um, and also you have like this very big move that is quite hard at first. I think it's where I fell on my first try. And then you have this very sketchy heel hook, at least that's my beta. So that's kind of like the move that felt the hardest for me. And once the heel actually stuck and I had the next hold, I felt pretty confident. I had beta from uh, Yerne and then I adapted the beta because I also knew the beta from uh, Chris. I'm seeing his video and I found what suited best for me and uh, I could climb the boulder on the rope, which gave me a lot of confidence. I felt good on the crux moves like right away. I knew this route was completely my style, like very physical, quite a few hard moves in a row, but I was able to figure it out and actually felt pretty confident to just give it a go. Soon after working it out on, on the rope, I was ready to give it a go when Niels came around the corner on a boat. He was doing a boat tour this day and uh, he was saying, Dan, there were like so many jellyfish around the corner. Uh, he doesn't know if it's a good idea to, to climb right now. And I was like, ah, come on, nah, I was so ready. I have to give it a go now. And uh, I was like, ah, whatever. If there are some jellyfish, at least there was a boat, which gives you like so much more safety. Kruda just tried and he was fine, so I'll be lucky. <laughs>
Yeah, Lasha is definitely like fully my style. Face climbing on thin cut crimps, but quite small holds, uh, very powerful. Nothing crazy, like no jumps or anything, just pure strength. And that after like some part that you had to climb. I love this route immediately. The last like 20, 30 meters that are really easy, but you know that you're not allowed to fall anymore. I was still just completely focused, but at the same time, kind of like already celebrating with all my friends. Niels down at the boat, the other guys up there cheering me on, topping out and having the guys waiting for me and just like shaking their hands. Uh, it's a memory I will never forget. Ja, wir haben nie gewusst, wo die Schlüssel stellen ist, was so easy als Ferrer ist. Zwei Abdehnen und nach vorne. That day and the experience of the climb of like sending Alasha was definitely one of the most special moments I've ever lived. It's just such a spectacular route, like perfect rock, amazing moves, but then you're also like, it's a real deep water solar route. Like you're high above the water, you're like 20, meters above the water you don't really want to do a mistake anymore you're in full focus and I feel like I really experienced deep water soloing for the first time Thank you.